Hello everyone, welcome to this lesson. So in the last lesson we saw that if two molecules are going to react with each other, they are going to need to have three things. First of all, they're going to have to collide, they're going to have to collide in the correct way, and they're going to have to have enough energy. So, there are five ways that we as humans can manipulate the system in order to, in order to achieve more successful collisions. The first way we can do that is the following. The first one is going to be the surface area. Now this is applicable to solids only. So let's say you need to dissolve a tablet in a glass of water. Now you could either drop that tablet in as it is, so that would be the solid lump over here. So you literally take it and drop it in the water. Or you could first grind up your powder or grind up the tablet into a fine powder and then place it into the water. Which one is going to cause the dissolving process to be fastest? Maybe you've encountered this in life where you've had to do this. But what you would realize is that the powder dissolves a lot faster than the solid lump. Let's take a closer look as to what's actually happening. So what I want to show you first over here is that with the solid, it's only the particles that are on the very outside that can be influenced by the water that is, on, that is surrounding it. So for example, it's only these little particles on the surface over here that are going to be affected by the water. What about the little particles that are in the middle, like somewhere right in the middle of the particle, somewhere over there? Well, that particle is not going to be affected until all of the solid around it has been dissolved first. Whereas if we had to break everything up, then each particle becomes exposed to the water, including that little green particle that was originally not exposed to the water. So when you break a powder up, in, well, when you break a solid up into a powder, you drastically increase the number of particles that are exposed at any given time. And remember, for a reaction to take place or any dissolving process to take place, the water has to be able to c connect with the particle. And now if your green particle is inside there, then the water on the outside cannot get to it. Here I've got a side view. So we've got these pink particles that are on the surface. The water can easily get to those. But notice that the green particle is somewhere in between. So it's in the middle. It's right at the center of that, that tablet. And so the water won't be able to get to that until all of this has been dissolved, all of this around it. So that's going to take a lot longer. But if we can grind that solid up into a powder, well then that exposes all of the particles individually. And so the water can then attack any of the particles that it needs to. And so if we change the surface area, which of these three factors are we manipulating? Are we manipulating the fact that the molecules must collide? Yes, because have a look here. In the solid form, this water molecule cannot collide with that green particle over there. So we can't even, we don't even have a collision taking place. Whereas in the powder form, the water is at least able to now collide with the green particle. And so we are causing the molecules to collide. The orientation, well, no, we can't change that. We can't cause the particles to move in a specific direction. So we're not changing that. And we're not increasing the energy either. So we're only changing the, we'll be increasing the number of collisions. And so that increases the chances that they will co collide with the correct orientation. And it, it just increases the reaction rate. You must know that many of the collisions between the water and that green particle, many of them aren't going to be effective because maybe the orientation won't be correct or the energy won't be correct. But at least we are increasing the chances that the collisions will be successful. And so as a whole, that will make the reaction go faster. Now, number two, or the second thing that we can do to change the rate of the collision is if it's a liquid, we can change the concentration. So let's say we have two systems of here. We've got system A on the left and system B on the right. Now, in which system would you expect the collisions or would you expect the rate of the reaction to be faster? Well, well done if you said system A, because it makes sense. Now imagine both of these two systems are at the same temperature, and so the energy of the particles is the same, types of particles is, are the same, 
But in system A, you've got a lot more particles in, a sa in the same area. And so these particles are going to bump into each other a lot more often. Imagine this is a top view of people running around in a room. Obviously in system A, people are going to bump into each other more often. And so by increasing the concentration, because remember concentration is how many or how much of something can you fit into a given area. So if we increase the concentration, we will definitely increase the chances that the collisions between these molecules will take place more often. We're not going to be able to affect the orientation. We're not going to make the molecules have more energy, but we are going to make them collide more often. And so that will make the rate of our reaction faster. If we are dealing with gases, then a pressure change can help us influence the collision. So think about this. Let's say we've got this container that we can see in front of us and we decide that we want to increase the pressure. Now remember what pressure is, is it's the force of the particles on the walls of the container. And so if we could cause those particles to bump into the container more often, well then we have increased the pressure. So one way to do this is to decrease the volume. And so it's very clear to see what happens when we decrease the volume. The particles are still going to be moving at the same speed, by the way. Many students think that their energy is now increased. No, all that's happened is that they are now moving within a smaller room, and so they will, they will bump into each other more often. And so once again, we will affect the collisions. Once again, we're not going to be able to influence the orientation and we're also not going to be able to change the energy. All that's happening is we've made the container a little bit smaller and so the particles now have a smaller area to move in and so we'll bump into each other more often and so we are increasing the chances that they will collide and that's all. So in summary, if you can increase the pressure of a gas, then you increase the chances that the molecules collide and so that will increase the rate of the reaction. The next one we're going to look at is temperature and this is the biggest influencer. This is the one that can change quite a lot. So if we have a reaction that is busy taking place and we increase the temperature, now that is the same as having a room like this. When you increase that temperature, you are going to give energy to each of these molecules. Remember temperature is a measure of energy. And so if you give those particles more energy, they are going to move around more quickly. So they will bump into each other more often. We can't influence the orientation, but they, they now have more energy. And so look at that. This is the first factor that we have studied that allowed us to change both the number of collisions, but also the energy. And that is why temperature is the biggest factor when trying to make a reaction happen faster. So just in summary once more, when you increase the temperature, the particles start moving faster, and so that means they're gonna collide more often. And then you're also giving them more energy, and so they will now have enough energy to react. It doesn't mean all of them are gonna have enough energy, but you're gonna increase the number of particles that will have enough energy. There will still be some that don't have enough energy. I just, I just want to show a simplified diagram that I like to show my students with temperature. So let's say the activation energy for this reaction is 5 joules. What that means is that your particles need at least 5 joules of energy to be able to react. So if we had to look at these 5 particles in this tank, at the moment only 1, 2, only 2 of them can actually react. Now if we increase the temperature, that is not going to change the activation energy, but what it will do is it's going to change each of these numbers. So let's say we increase the temperature by 10 degrees Celsius, and what that does is it increases the energy of each of the particles by 3 joules. Then, all of a sudden, this one will become 5 joules. And so now, if we looked at how many particles were able to exceed the activation energy, it would be this one, or oh, sorry, that's this one this one, this one, and this one. So now all of a sudden, four of the particles are able to react and not only two of them. But please note that we didn't change the activation energy. That stays the same. All that we did is we increased the energy of each of the particles and so more of them had a chance to be able to react. 
There are still some, however, like this one, that did not meet the minimum requirements. And the last one we're going to look at is the catalyst. So a catalyst is something that can speed up a reaction without being used up in the process. The way it does that is it helps the particles to react in a different way and that different way requires less energy. It shows them a better way to do things. So a catalyst looks at the way that the particles are reacting and then finds a better way for them to do it that requires less energy. So it doesn't mean the particles will have less energy, it means less energy will be needed. So if I had to all of a sudden change this to three joules, now all of a sudden more particles can react. Because let's look at the original number first, there was five joules. And so only this one and this one could react, so two particles. If I then decrease my activation energy to three, then all of a sudden this one can react and this one can react. And so more of the particles are able to react because they now meet the minimum activation energy requirements. And so a catalyst does not cause the particles to collide more often. Okay, so it doesn't give them more energy, it doesn't make the, the container smaller, it doesn't add any more particles like concentration or pressure. All it does, and it doesn't change the orientation, but what it does affect is the energy. It doesn't affect the energy of the particles, like temperature does, but what it does do is it decreases the activation energy and so more particles have enough energy to react. So there we have it guys. In the first lesson we said that there are three things that we need in order for a reaction to take place. Now in this lesson we looked at the five different ways that we can manipulate the system in order to speed up the reaction. Thank you very much for watching.